Blessed and happy feast of Nairuz that was yesterday and blessed and happy the feasts of the martyrs. These days from today all the way to um, the feast of the cross we will have joyful tunes celebrating the martyrs. And uh, it's a very rich season. Some, some of us might not know exactly what the church is doing in this season but the, the church is doing something very beautiful. The church, as usual, is very, very genuine to the gospel, to the word of God. And then also, this is the source of our life. Everything, everything we do comes from there. So, why would be John the Baptist celebrated the second day of the Coptic year? That's a good question. I always ask myself, why would John the Baptist martyr them? specifically be celebrated the, exactly the second day and then a few days from now we'll have Saint Stephen. Saint John the Baptist in the Gospel of Saint John especially in the beginning. In the Gospel of Saint John there are talking talks about or there's many many places in the Gospel that speaks of marturia. Marturia the Greek word is witnessing to witness to witness. What is this about? What is witnessing about? It is not just telling the truth. It is standing up for it, standing up for the truth. So, Marturia in the Gospel is linked to Aletheia. Marturia is the witnessing and Aletheia is the truth. Marturia witnessing is for the truth. At the beginning, the very beginning of the Gospel, after they give us this, the St. John writes this very beautiful theological piece, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, the Word was with God, and the, the Word was God. A man came from God, his name is John. He was not the light, but he came to witness, to bear witness for the light. So the job of John the Baptist is to bear witness, and he bore witness. There's another word in English, that has the idea of witness. There is another word. Um, anybody heard about testimony? That's another word, to give a testimony. You know, when you go to court, they say the witness has given their testimony. And from it, you get the word testament. So what's a testament? It's an account of the truth. It's a witness. So when you have an old testament, that is the old account of truth. What's the New Testament? It is the account of the new, or the new account of truth. Jesus said that, actually we take it from him, that's why the, the Bible in English is called the Testament. He said, you search the books because you think you have eternal life, but these are who? Testify, bear witness for me. So the, the Old Testament and New Testaments bear witness to Christ, the Son of God. John the Baptist, John the Baptist is the seal and the voice of the Old Testament. So he becomes the witness of the old law. Why? We, we came, we said, we saw him in the gospel speaks about the commandments. He spoke to the king very boldly and said to him, you cannot do that. The the word of God, the commandment of God does not allow you to take your wife, your brother's wife, as your wife. This is wrong. So this is a testament of the truth of the old law. And St. John the Baptist was very bold in it. But as he was giving his testament to the king about the old law, he gave testament to Christ. And the first testament, St. John says, beautiful, he put it beautifully, he said, the first confession, the first witness he gives, I am not Christ. He asked him, who are you? You are Christ? He said, no. He, he gave the true witness, it is, I am not Christ. The, the first testament, in the, the first witnessing in the gospel that John the Baptist gave is a negation, is a negative one. I am not him. And then they asked him, who are you? He said, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. So this is St. John the Baptist. Our Lord spoke of four witnesses, four. Let's count them. He spoke of those four. 
It might be five if I add John the Baptist. So the first witness was the scriptures. He said that the scriptures, the testaments, bear witness of him. The second father, when he in the in the in the Jordan said, "This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased," um, and then um, he did it again on the mountain of Tabor when he said, "This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased." Listen to him, the father. So John the Baptist, the father. I'm sorry, Scripture, the father. Then John the Baptist, when he said, "You came to John." and you were pleased to have him like a little lamb for a little while, but he bore witness of me. And then Jesus ended by saying, and I don't take a, a witness of a man. It's not belittling St. John the Baptist, but he's saying something more. We will know it from the fourth one. The fourth one, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will bear witness of me, and you will be bearing with him. Like the Holy Spirit through the apostles will bear witness of Christ. Imagine. Because without the Holy Spirit, I mean, let me, let's just face it, without the Holy Spirit, the, the apostles cannot bear witness. Proof? Anybody needs a proof? Before the Holy Spirit, what did Peter say about Jesus? When he was questioned. I don't know you. I don't know him. And P Saint, uh, Jesus told him, Peter, don't do it. You will, don't, go, don't go after me. Don't come tonight. You will betray me. And St. Peter said, no, I will do it. I'm a good witness. Nonsense. So the four, again, the, the scriptures... John the Baptist, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. The two divine persons of the Trinity are going to witness for the, the second divine person. So the Father and the Spirit will witness for the Son. When you talk about martyrs and John the Baptist, who is really working in John the Baptist and the martyrs? It is the, the Holy Spirit. But then we are called to do the same. We are called to do the same. What are we going to witness for Christ today? You, like the apostles, are called. The apostles are called to be eyewitnesses. They will tell everybody, we've seen him crucified and died. We actually helped in burying him. He was a cold, he, he had a cold corpus and we put it in the, in the grave and we closed the door. But then three days later, we saw him arise. We touched him. We walked with him. We ate with him. He went to places with us for 40 days. We had conversations. And everybody will not believe them, but they will die. Will die to that point that we've seen the risen Lord. Now, what is your witness? What has happened to us? Same thing. We have the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that we lived in the apostles still live in you and me today. What is the truth that we witness for? I'll give you three truths that's actually coming from our baptism and communion. The first truth is, when you were baptized, St. Paul says, you were one with Christ. Your body belonged to him. If your conscience says that you're acting like the body of Christ, you're a good witness. Meaning, I'm using my members of my body as if they are the members of Christ. So coming out of liturgy today, you've taken Christ in you, and you speak no evil. You don't, you refuse to gossip. And when somebody says, why are you not talking about this person or whatever, you say, I have just taken Christ. I'm one with him. I cannot take his mouth and do this. Like Joseph in the old times when he said, how can I do this evil thing and sin against the Lord? Well, there's, the Lord is not seeing you. Where is the Lord? No, he's going to say, he is in me. He is in me. What is the other thing, the other fact? So I'm one with Christ. My members are the members of Christ. I cannot take those members of Christ and do something awful with them. That's a bad witness. Jesus spoke one time to the Jews and told them, you are a witness of your father. God forbid the devil. He spoke to talk to them about the devil. Why? He said, because he was a liar. What is Jesus trying to say? You're lying. You lie all the time. And you are... The, the Jews, of course, at the time, he said, the, you, you are hypocrites, and this is the way of the devil. So your action showed that you're a witness for, not me, not for God. You're witnessing for the devil who is the liar and the father of all lies. So now one is, I'm witnessing that my body and my life today belongs to Christ. I'm not owning myself. I can do whatever I please with my body and with my mind and with my heart. 
Number two, I'm a child of the Father. This is the second fact that we came to. Even if you don't read the Word of God, just the fact that you are baptized. As Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and told him, no one can be born of heaven until it's born of water and spirit. No one can see the kingdom of God until it's born again. In the Gospel it says, and to those who receive him, he gave the power to become the children of God, those who believe in his name. When you come to baptism, when you bring the child to baptism, you took the identity of that child from being your child, father or mother, and you give it to God. And they lived like that. So Jesus says something like this. Be merciful. Be kind. To be the children of your father. Act the way you're called to be. If you believe you are the child of God, you will act like Joseph, you will act like the apostles. You would say, I can't be unkind. That's a witness. Someone is harsh with you. You don't give yourself an excuse and say, they're harsh. They're, you know, I, I'm entitled to this. I have to return the evil for evil. He said, turn your other cheek. What's that? That's what God is doing. In the cross, God showed us that he does not turn evil for evil. He does not treat us the way we treat him. And Jesus saying, if you want to be the child and to show yourself as a child of God, you act like God. You act like God, but with wisdom. Jesus said that. Be meek like doves, but also be wise as snake. Don't put yourself in the way of danger and say, I'm going to act like God. That's not the fact. The church actually had condemned people who used to tease the governors to kill them. They used to do that. They go to the governor and say, I'm a Christian and I hate your guts. And the governor would say, why? And he started cursing the governor to do what? To get them to be martyrs. And the church actually, in the time of St. Peter, the, the, the patriarch in Egypt, he said, anyone who's going to do that is excommunicated. Not even a martyr, not even a saint. He's excommunicated. He's not a Christian. So be wise. So that means to be like God, to be like our Father, is to be gentle and, and kind and good as God, but also not to be foolish. The third one that I actually witness for is I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. If I am one with Christ and the body of Christ is in me and I belong to God the Father, then the Holy Spirit lives in me. What is the, how do I witness for with the Holy Spirit? By allowing the fruit of the Spirit. What are the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit we all know. Love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, all these things, that things like that, will be the fruit of the Spirit. I don't manufacture it. I don't make it because that's not my work. I cannot do it. But I stick with God. I pray so that I can be filled with the fruit. I give more chances for the Spirit to work on me by working on the acts of sanctification. I sanctify myself so that the Spirit can become more and more alive in me so I can do the works of the Spirit. So to be a witness today, you don't have to be a martyr to be killed. Because I will tell you something. There is martyrdom or witnessing by your life, and there is martyrdom and witnessing by death. You cannot, martyr, you cannot be a martyr, a witness, by your death, unless first you have martyred, you have martyred or you have witnessed by your life. If you, you live the life of a martyr, you will die the death of a martyr, even if you're not killed. So this is our witness, and that's what we're called for. Today, St. Paul is in a letter to the Hebrews. He's bringing a list of all the Old Testament. He says they did something marvelous, and it's a, it's a riddle, actually. We, we might work on this one, uh, Hebrews 11. He spoke about the people driving, driving armies away. He spoke about those who survived the, the edge of the sword. And you have to figure it out. Go to the Old Testament and see which ones are. This is, a, this is a, like a riddle. So who drove an army? We just read that yesterday with the kids. Jonathan. Jonathan, with the zeal and, and the Spirit of God in him, he went up into a garrison of thousands with his arm bearer, and he actually ended up having victory for Israel over those thousands. That's, that's one of the riddle answers. So you and I can do the same. We can do the same if we are true witnesses of God's life in us. We ask him to give us the, the, the help and the power to be a good witness, to give a good testimony in its time when it is needed. And we, we don't know when, when is that going to happen. But the testimony can be called verbally or physically or by death or by life. Whatever form it comes, 
We pray that we are ready for it. To him is the glory, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.